Hey guys, so as you can see in the bottom right corner, getting right into it, it is 8.40 a.m. on Thursday, January 25th, okay, um, excuse me, my voice is going a little bit, I'm a bit sick, but I wanted to give my thoughts on the market and kind of walk through what I'm expecting today, then see how it plays out throughout the day. So I think indices are bearish, okay? And I think dollar is bullish, and I'll explain why. So obviously we have previous day high, previous day low. Okay, I'm looking at a 15-minute chart here on ES, then we'll go to NASDAQ and dollar. Okay, so I'm looking at this plain and simple right now as accumulation, manipulation, and then distribution. I want the manipulation right here and this accumulation taking place above tonight's, or excuse me, today's uh, midnight opening price at 48.9750. Okay. Another thing here, so we have a lot of choppy, obviously we sold off here pretty aggressively, but both stages of delivery, a lot of back and forth movement. So I believe previous day high, right? Wednesday's high is safe, okay? Um, unless they're gonna just continue to rip it higher and continue to make higher highs, all time highs, whatever, there should be no reason for price to go back up here, right? This should remain a breakaway gap up here, right? That goes without saying though. Um, so I think we're gonna fall off a cliff today and tomorrow. And I think we're gonna take out yesterday's low at 48.89 even, okay? And I think we're gonna continue lower to these relative equal lows right here from Monday's low at 48.73.50. And you can see that it's not only relative equal lows, which people of course think is support. So there's sell side liquidity resting below but it's this week's new week opening gap. And that brings me to the weekly chart, okay? Let me zoom in here. If we're looking at this weekly candle, right? You guys already know every candle has a wick, right? The open, if you look at the top left corner, the open of this week is 48.7250 and the low is 48.7250. So what does that mean? There's been no distribution lower, okay? So it's just more of a reason, right? And that's just what I just said, which we could have seen on the on the 15 minute chart, right? We can see how there's sell side right there. And the new week opening gap, as soon as we open, we expanded higher, okay? <clears throat> so I'm bearish indices. Um, it would be nice to see ES take out the swing high here. NASDAQ got this, but let's go to NASDAQ and see what's taking place. Okay, so NASDAQ, similar, similar, excuse me, thinking. Um, we got all-time highs, right? People want a continuation to the upside, that euphoric feeling. Um, I do want to watch these wicks today, okay? The quadrants on the daily chart. Um, this is a potential draw. Excuse me, my voice is going. <clears throat> this is a potential draw. This volume imbalance here, okay? That is 17,554 even. We're working this four hour order block as well. Okay, we can keep an eye on this wick also. Okay, and we'll watch the quadrants as well. All right, one thing I am um, keeping an eye on with the short idea is that if I take equal equilibrium of this range from this low to the high of the week, right? It's right here. Look on the right side. Equilibrium is 176150. The close of this candle and the open of this one is exactly that number, 176150. Right? So I'd really need to see us displaced through here. More so close below um, this fair value gap, but by extension, obviously this one as well, where we found support. Okay. Um, one hour, okay. It would be nice to see this upper breakaway gap remain open, right? We could still trade up there and then get rejection, okay? But in terms of um, confidence in the short, obviously it would be nice to see us give us a ghost fairly soon, right? Or consolidate in the opening range, then sell off. So the plan for... NASDAQ is the same 
framework as we discussed on ES. So I think accumulation, right? It's probably easier to see here, right? So accumulation, right? Above minute opening price, manipulation also above minute opening price, back to equilibrium of this range. That's looking the right side, 1768175. From this low to this high, coming back to a short term premium, trapping people with the 830 news, the unemployment data, to think it's gonna go higher, right? All we're doing is returning to a short term premium, right? Which I'm gonna delete now, and sweeping this buy side liquidity there. That's short term swing high, right? Right at equilibrium, okay? This is all balanced, right? Price is not going to go back up here. This is all balanced right now, at least till we meet some of these sell side objectives. Okay. Okay. On top of this, I'm seeing now we have equal lows, maybe 17, 6, 10, 50, 76, 25. So relative equal lows here. So people still think this is support, right? Along with that, those relative equal lows from earlier in the week that we discussed on ES as well. All right, there's a lot of sell side liquidity there. <clears throat> okay, we can see again, equilibrium. Took out this high here. We could keep an eye on this five minute gap. See if they want to rip it up there. Not necessary to trade there. If I get a short setup and it doesn't trade there, it's still valid for me. I'll still take a stab at it. But I'm fairly confident that lower prices will be delivered today and that this sell off was real, at least till we get some sell side objectives and we'll reassess. Okay, but now let me bring up dollar and beautiful. I wish I said this, uh, started recording. I should have started with dollar before they did this, but. Um, dollar, it fell just short of this wick by like, what, 0.064 or something. Very close. This would have been a nice immediate rebound inside of an inversion. We're still getting that support out of the inversion. Um, but we're kind of trapped in between these two levels, right? The inversion and mean threshold of this order block on the weekly. Um, on the daily, as you can see, I already have charted here. We're trapped again between this wick, we just bounced off the quadrant. In this order block here, we bounced off the first bear, uh, quadrant of this bearish order block. Okay, so it uh, to mention here on the the daily before I go further, this was the liquidity void we were watching. Obviously, you can see we fell just short of it yesterday. If we had tapped into it and then saw this reaction, right, the strong wick up, I would be super bullish on dollar. Right, I'm a little more hesitant because we didn't press into it. It still could leave it. Right, but it's still something to, to monitor as my, my voice continues to go. But <clears throat> um, let's go to the four hour. There's not much I want to mention here. Okay. Um, all right, we tapped into this breaker here, right? Open low to this these consecutive up close candles to previous week's high. Okay, now we retrace lower. Now, the bodies are still respecting the small bissy here, right? We wicked down lower. Again, fell just short of that liquidity void. It would have seen, uh, been nice to see us go into that and deliver to it already. Um, I'm looking at this whole area, right, as kind of a balanced price range, right? So, whichever area we kind of, I shouldn't say it like that. If we close above this structure, bullish on dollar obviously, right, but pretty, pretty strong conviction of higher prices on dollar. Okay, because this is all going to be balanced, right. And this would become your bullish breaker, these two consecutive up close candles, right. So if we expand above this high and close above it, very bullish on dollar, which would pan well for our bearish idea on ES and NASDAQ. Okay, but um, I really need to see what Dollar wants to do, it's going to take some time, obviously, because this is the four hour chart, the daily, right? Um, but just looking at, we can mention this one hour busy here, right? And I guess I should, right? Yes, we have the liquidity void here, but this is back and forth movement as well, right? There's no inefficiencies down there, right? The last line of defense would really be this order block I'll watch, right? 
if we displace through that, right, we're probably going to go down here to 102.742, which is the high of that liquidity void. Also, along with, of course, yesterday's low at 102.770 right here. Right here. <clears throat> but I think we'll get support out of this, right? Um, and more importantly, we can see on the 50-minute chart. This is that balanced price range formation here. So I'm under the assumption that these are trap shorts right now, okay? This is the only inefficiency here, right? We left these relative equal highs along with this right here. Do we just create equal highs? 371, 372. So we barely purged this high, but right, people still see that as resistance. So that's still equal highs to me, okay? Stop punts are deep, right? It's not just gonna tap it by the smallest amount it possibly can then reverse, right? It's gonna go back up there. And I think that this 15 minute busy will support price, okay? We just came down and swept these equal lows back down to equilibrium of this range, right? Or we didn't actually get there quite yet. If we refine it to this, geez, <clears throat> my voice. If we refine it to this here, this dealing range, we came back down into it, all right? That's perfectly fine, but there should be no need for price to come back down here. Aggressive sell side delivery followed by aggressive recovery in buy side delivery. So it's at both stages. So it should be balanced, right? And this is the only inefficiency here, okay? Um, so I'll be keeping an eye on this. I don't want to see closes below this 50 minute busy here on dollar, right? So we swept this and now I want to see us get support. Okay. And that would pan well if we get support out of this on dollar, that would pan well for, like I said, the bearish idea on indices. So, um, I wanted to share that beforehand and it's nice to see ES just got this as well. So now I'm really interested in shorts. Okay, it doesn't mean I'm trigger happy. It doesn't mean I'm rushing, forcing um, the idea, imposing my will in the market, right? I'm still waiting to see price present its model to me. Just because I form a bias doesn't mean I just have an excuse to just hammer the button and press short, 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 right? That's just one step of the process. Now I just wait for my model to come to fruition, something that presents itself where I can frame risk responsibly and not go crazy, right? And I'm still under the assumption just because I have a strong conviction in lower prices on ES and NASDAQ today, I'm always under the assumption that I could be wrong, right? So we don't over leverage, we don't go crazy. If I'm wrong, I don't revenge trade because my ego hurts, right? It's just another day in the business. But I thought I'd share my thoughts today. Um, so I'm gonna end the recording now because I wanna really focus in and my laptop would explode if I recorded the entire session today, right? But if I do enter a trade, I'll record it of course. And then I'll also come back on after um, price plays out or the market closes today and give my thoughts regardless of if I am right, right? We'll talk about the setup or if I am wrong, what, what went wrong? What did I not see? Right. Um, but besides the fact that there's just liquidity up here, right, unless they're just going to rip it one more time and mess with everyone. And this was a false sell off. Um, this should all be balanced, like I said. So I'll be back on and I'll, of course, I'll fast forward the video right to it after the market closes and after price plays out. OK, everybody. So now the market is closed and Thursday's trading is completed. You can see in the bottom right hand corner here. It is 5, 10 p.m. Eastern time, okay? Um, let's start with the daily chart on NASDAQ. And as mentioned, um, pre-market, I wanted to monitor the quadrants of this wick, okay? And this volume imbalance as a potential draw on liquidity. And we got just that, right? So we reached up to a deep premium, okay? Tapped into 75% of this wick. I'm using my FIB from the high to the low of the wick. And 75%, as you can see, is 17,750.5, okay? The high of today is 17,752 even, right? So a point and a half above it. And of course, we'll investigate that on the lower time frames. But that's why you watch these key reference points, right? That are inside of these wicks, okay? The algorithm is going to work these, right? And then we do get that draw down to the volume and balance like we were looking for. Okay, now... As you heard already before open, I wanted to see this remain as a breakaway gap, right? So that's either price failing to deliver to it at all or tapping into it and leaving the upper portion of it 
open, right? Not delivering to the entirety of the SIBI, okay? Obviously, we didn't get the breakaway gap, but like I mentioned, we could still deliver into it and then roll lower, right? So this is still permissible, right? Best case though, it would have been nice to see us not deliver to this, okay? But obviously, we still had a good setup as I will discuss as we continue. But look at the bodies, right? If I take 50% of this SIBI, that is, look on the right, 17.727 even, right? The bodies tell a story. We're wicking above, not only into this one hour bearish order block, but remember, 75% of that wick, if I copy that and paste it down to my one hour chart, okay? We're going right there, right? So we're wicking a little deeper into a premium to a higher time frame key reference point, but the bodies are telling us it's respecting this premium PD array. Okay. Um, again, as we'll see, I'll go to the 15 minute chart now and talk about how we did um, pre-market with our analysis. And excuse me, guys, my voice is still kind of going. Um, but if you recall, price was right around here when we were talking, right? Right around 830. Okay. I believe it was maybe like 840 ish, but NASDAQ came up to take this short term buy side right here, internal buy side liquidity. Okay. And where is that residing? From this high to this low, it's in a premium of this range. So like I said, price was only coming up here to deliver to a premium and purge some buy side, right? Trapping longs. So all these rallies today in the morning, as we'll, we'll go to the lower time frames, were suspect to me. So I was just waiting for a short setup. And even look at, um, again, just on the right side, this is still, again, the 75% of that wick. We're wicking up to it. And even on the 15 minute chart, we can see that the bodies are expecting what? This inversion fair value gap. So <clears throat> like I mentioned, everything up here should be balanced, right? Until we at least reach some sell side objectives, which of course you can see we did. Um, we've had a stop raid, a lot of back and forth movement. And then this inversion, right, we came up to, right, which of course was residing in that SIBI, right? Price is price regardless of time frame, right? It's still the same area. But it's nice to see these signatures remain true as we go to the lower time frames as well, right? Look at the body closing here, below 50% of this, this inversion. That's what you want to see, okay? Um, if you recall as well, we have accumulation, right, manipulation, everything we just described, and then distribution, right? We had these relative equal lows right here. People think support, right? Along with yesterday's low, okay? At, what is that? 1756975, okay? Below minute opening price. All reasons for us to go down here, okay? And let me actually get that volume imbalance, copy that, and paste it onto this 15-minute chart. All right, so you can see that's right here. So it looks like we came right around consequent encroachment of that. Yeah, see, look at that beautiful, right? Delivered to take the sell side liquidity, the sell side liquidity below minute opening price after the Judas swing, right? Into a premium key reference point, algorithmic signatures showing us with the bodies that it's reasonable to expect us to go lower. Even look at these bodies right here, respecting the low of that inversion. Those are the signatures you wanna see, okay? Now let's go to the five minute chart and see how we did there. Okay, this is what I mentioned as well. Okay, a little coloring outside of the lines here, but remember, that's okay. Best case, obviously that doesn't occur as we go to the lower time frames. Um, but we are still seeing the respect on the 15 minute, the hourly, etc., which we've already discussed. But nonetheless, we did deliver to this five minute SIBI, right? Three drives pattern, right? I, I wasn't really looking at that, but you can obviously see it here. And then it's just a clear depiction of getting all of these lows, right? This is your accumulation. Okay. Your distribution. Premium delivery. Sweeping that internal buy side we were talking about. And then distributing lower, below minute opening price. Okay. So smart money, they were accumulating their shorts above minute opening price. That's what ICT teaches, all right? Okay, and now we are down on the one minute chart. So we can see what occurred. We wick up into what? 
Look at the right side. 75% of that daily wick sweeping the short-term buy side, right? And this is the type of reaction you want to see off key reference points, right? If we're bearish, which we've discussed at the start of this video, we just mark out our key reference points premium and wait for these type of reactions. So this up and down movement, right? That's that balance price range. That's trapped longs there, right? Thinking we're going to continue higher and go get yesterday's high, go get all time highs, etc. Right. But we're just running into a key reference point. Now, more importantly, what time did we do that? The 1150 macro. So let me get this labeled here. So we're not just trading price for price sake, right? We're waiting for time, right? The algorithm is going to work these levels during the time it's coded to, right? So this movement away from this key reference point is what you want to look for, right? So even if this, say this was 50% of the daily wick and we failed to get 75%, but it was during the macro, same process, same order of operations, right? Sweep of this buy side liquidity, rejection off a premium key reference point because we're bearish during the time of day we expect it. And then we start to see what? Discount PDA raise or bullish PDA raise, whatever you want to call it, failed to support price, right? So this can be an entry here. That's an inversion right there, okay? This is a bearish breaker right there. So whatever makes sense to you, you can enter with. So the trade um, I'm going to review um, I will link the tweet down in the description because I recorded it. Okay. Um, it's on my Twitter. And I traded, I shorted ES, which we'll get to, but I want to talk about NASDAQ as well. So we're seeing time align with price, right? And obviously we have aggressive sell side delivery and we do end up getting 830 low below midnight open. And then I forget what this was. Yesterday's low. Okay. So good move on NASDAQ right? Again, down to the daily volume and balance that we wanted as our draw on liquidity before open. Now, even to mention right here, so I wasn't at the charts, I had things to take care of um, elsewhere. But at the end of the day, I'm just seeing this now. This is your 150 to 210 macro. And this is that daily volume and balance I just copied and pasted, obviously from the daily chart. And what are we doing? It's time meeting price, right? So 150, 210, that's right here. That's your 150 macro, okay? And we're tapping this key reference point, consequent encroachment of this daily volume imbalance. And what occurs right after? Multiple things. I'm, this is my first time looking at it too, multiple things. Failed bearish immediate rebounds into, right? a bullish immediate rebounds. Okay. This is that trap short formation. And then we have change in state of delivery. We break above this here, right? This was resistance before, right? We break above this. Okay. And we start to see down close candles support price, right? So that's your change in the state of delivery. That's what you want to see after this type of delivery. Okay, all everything that occurred there, right? And your stop loss, whatever entry you use here, right? I have other videos on that, so I don't want to harp on that now. But whatever entry makes sense to you here, I put my stop loss below the swing low that delivered at the key reference point. Okay, that's what I found to be the safest. Okay, but now let's go to ES and see what occurred. All right, so as we can see, ES here on the one hour chart, it didn't quite get the sell side liquidity we were looking for as NASDAQ did. So we still got a good move on NASDAQ and we still were able to get a winning trade, right? With real logic, which we'll discuss. Um, but don't focus on these two candles right now. We'll get to that, but I want you to focus on what occurred right here. So the high of this candle, the hourly candle at 10 a.m., right? We open and that high is 49.2650. I'm taking the eighths, which I've mentioned in previous videos as well. And I'm mapping those out. Okay, so if I zoom in, right, the eighth above 50% of that wick, 49.2650, look at the high now of that 10 a.m. candle is exactly that, 49.2650. So we're getting precision from ES. So ES, it's always working something, right? This is why I prefer ES over NASDAQ most of the time. I'll still trace NASDAQ, but 
um, we see this type of precise delivery, right? We're wicking up into this eighth level of a wick, but the bodies are also respecting the SIBI that we were watching in the morning, all right? And then just looking at the 50 minute chart before I go to the trade review, we did get that internal buy side we were looking for, and this did on this move down, this is what I caught here, I'll get to that. This 15 minute SIBI did in fact remain a breakaway gap, which is what we wanted to see mentioned pre-market, okay? Um, the target for Terminus was here, right? And then obviously through to these lows as well. We fell just short of that, but we still can capitalize and have a winning trade out of that movement. Okay, and now we're gonna talk about the actual trade I took here on the S&P. So right here is where I found my interest. So of course I had a bearish bias, everything we've already talked about, but this is the type of delivery and logic I'm looking for, okay? We deliver to this level here, 49.2650. That's the eighth level of that wick that we just mentioned on the hourly chart, okay? We not only deliver to it, we get that crack in correlation. So NASDAQ here, right, made a higher high. ES failed to, right? So my first entry, as you'll see in the execution video on my Twitter, was as we were displacing below this BPR, I got short, right? So my stop again, above the high of the day, that delivered to that key reference point, right? After we have the SMT, after everything we've already discussed being accomplished to buy side, to premium, sweeping, short-term, internal range, buy side liquidity, things like that, I don't want this high to get taken. It delivered to a key reference point and we have the crack in correlation, right? So I'm trusting this is my stop loss. If it goes above that, I'm wrong anyways, and it's probably gonna dig higher, right? So I'm trusting that stop loss. And when I put it on here, right, I had a strong conviction in lower prices today, so I wanted to make sure I was getting involved, right? But my stop loss is still allowing price to retrace into this BPR if it wants to, as we see here, right? So I initially entered with one contract there. Price comes lower, right? And you'll see my annotations throughout that execution video. I type out, I'm adding a pyramid, I'm adding a contract to my position, if price allows me to, if it gets back up to this balance price range, right? It does exactly that. So I get filled and I have two here, right? And I type out, watch the bodies. So we've had buy side delivery, okay? Then we've had sell side delivery through it. So the bodies, remember, they tell the story. The bodies shouldn't close above. If the bodies close above this balance price range, it's probably going to my stop loss anyways, right? But this is the type of signatures you wanna see with the balance price range. Sweep this buy side again, deep premium, trap longs one more time, and then the body show you here what it wants to do, okay? If you missed this entry right here, right? Or you're just looking for entries here, you can enter on the BPR itself or right here, the SIBI, that's fine. After you see this algorithmic signature, this rejection away, you can start to look for shorts, right? And then as I had two contracts after the pyramid, right? I took a partial here. And as you guys know, I was looking for the 8.30 low, which we fell, what? 8.9675, up 1.25 points away. That's fine, okay? I took, um, I forget where I took partials, but I had stuff to take care of outside of the chart, so I couldn't stay. So um, it's fine, right? Even if it delivered to it here, I wouldn't be punching the air, right? It's still a logical good move following a model following a system, right? Reading price action, not getting hyped up over this win, right? If it was a loss, I wouldn't get down on the loss, right? Um, I actually do want to mention this daily chart. Look at this wick here, 50%. What level is that actually? 93.50. No, so that's what we tapped um, pre-market, right? But nonetheless, um, good move down here, right? And I wasn't here for any of this, but let's go look at dollar. Okay, so dollar, as you can see, we were watching those quadrants before open, and we did get support out of that first quadrant, right? If we're bearish indices, that's a type of support off of a discount key reference point you want to see on dollar, right? Going back to the four hour, I'm still waiting to see if they want to close above this and this becomes a breaker that hasn't occurred yet. 
Okay, but we dug into this order block, but what I really want to mention here is on the hourly in the 15 minutes. So we mentioned this BISI I wanted support out of on dollar. We got just that, right? This is your trap short signature here, right? Sell side delivery, aggressive buy side recovery. Okay, this was the only inefficiency along with, it's a little more clear on the 15 minute, right? This was the only inefficiency. If this is all trap short and it's had both stages of delivery, why should price come back down here till at least we meet some buy side objectives? So here, here, some of this leg, good move, right? After sweeping this sell side liquidity here, right? So all that with dollar um, boded well for my short bias on indices. So again, um, I'll link the execution video to my Twitter in the description of this video. Um, but I thought it'd be cool if I recorded my thoughts before market open to see how I did again. I got some things right. I got some things wrong in terms of actual signatures where we are really going to go today, right? Um, NASDAQ got the lows, but ES fell just short, but we were still able to have profitable trades following sound logic, following models we've utilized time and time again, and we've discussed on this channel. So um, if you guys like this video, leave that thumbs up, make sure to subscribe, yada, yada, yada. Um, if you're not in my Discord yet, it's free. That link will be in the bio as well. Um, and I hope you guys learned from this video. If you guys have any questions, leave a comment below or just ping me in Discord. Later, guys.